Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Dofamenta had their press conferences at the NFL scouting combine earlier this morning. What does that mean? What did they say? And how much of it can we really take to the bank? We're going to talk about that because there are some very interesting comments here on a special episode of the real Forno show. by Tyler Fornis, the managing editor of USA Today's Vikings Wire, writer for the College Football Network, publisher of Substack Run In Shooter, host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, as well as a founding member of Vikings First and Skull. Welcome to a bonus episode of The Real Forno Show. I am your host, Tyler Forno. So with me as always, producer Dave. And we have some interesting things to talk about concerning the press conferences at the NFL Scouting Combine from Quasi Dofamensa and Kevin O'Connell. Dave, some really interesting stuff and also some stuff that really wasn't interesting, but kind of sounded interesting. And we're going to get into all of that. Overall thoughts on the press conferences from you, Dave. What did you think listening to both of these gentlemen talk? What did I think? That uh, they're masterful at what they say, and they didn't give us a whole lot of information, nor did I expect it, and they Mm -hmm. gave us a lot of fluff. There was a lot of fluff questions asked about other people, other topics, and they went in, you know, especially with Kevin and how his approach to hiring people and friends and stuff and all that stuff went in, got involved with that. So there was... We expected this. This was in front of the national press. The Mm -hmm. big get them tomorrow. That's when stuff will hit even harder, I suspect. So what was interesting about this press conference today, Dave, Alec Lewis asked the question, and it's not normally, as you kind of mentioned, usually I remember last year, The beat reporters got them right after the press conference because this is an opportunity for people who aren't able to talk to these guys on a regular basis to be able to ask questions. And that's when you get a lot of like repeat questions like, oh, what do you think about Kirk Cousins? Because they haven't been ingrained in covering this team like we have. So we already know these answers. We've already heard these guys talk about Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Daniel Hunter ad nauseum. So we have a sense of what they think and what they want to do. Well, somebody from New England who uh, asked multiple questions about Gerard Mayo because Mayo and O'Connell were in the same draft class and Mayo just got hired as the New England Patriots head coach. So there were questions there and you get some interesting questions like that. You also get questions that we already know the answer to because we cover the team, but they don't. So a lot of times you don't have opportunities to get a lot of information, but I think there were a couple tidbits that I really want to hit home. And one came from Kevin O'Connell and one came from Quasio Fomenza. So let's start with O'Connell. And they both affirmed their desire to bring back Kirk Cousins. But the quote from O'Connell, I thought was very interesting, Dave. And he says, I think Kirk Cousins wants to be a Viking and we're going to make that happen. So that, that goes with everything that we've been talking about with Kirk cousins in this team. It's both sides want a return. That doesn't mean it's going to happen because money talks and it's not just about the dollars. And Kirk mentioned, it was about what the dollars represent. Kirk wants to be the starter for a long time. He wants the Vikings to commit to him being the starter for a long time. And that means guarantees in 2025 and potentially 2026. I well, the Vikings believe, weren't willing to do that last March. I and because believe, they weren't willing to do that last March, I don't think they're going to be willing to do it now. I do believe he added it's up to the negotiation. Yeah, and th- that's the big thing. This has been known. Both sides want a reunion. Kirk wants to be here. They want Kirk here. The front office has said it. The coaching staff has said it. And the players have said it. It's, it's not about wanting to move on. Kwesi Dofamens has been very calculated in how he's spoken, which he should as a general manager. You always need to speak calculated and relatively vague. So he has always said, we want Kirk to return. We believe he can lead us to a Super Bowl, which he affirmed today. 
but also said it takes two to tango. And he didn't say those words vernacular. He didn't say him verbatim, but he said it, it takes both sides to agree to a deal. They want to agree to a deal, but the parameters of which they're going to want a deal are completely different. The Vikings want flexibility. They don't want to be locked into a three year. That's a $120 million contract full guaranteed. Rick Spielman was willing to do that in 2018. They believed Kirk was the missing piece to a Super Bowl. They essentially had two runs at it. 2018 and 2019. And then 2020, they had to make a lot of cap cutting moves to get under the salary cap. And they took a step back. They also signed Kirk to an extension. And we can talk about whether that was a good or bad idea. But the fact is, because of that first extension came the second extension. Quasi Ofomensa, as a general manager and how he's constructing this team, does not want to do that. One thing I found interesting in an article I wrote earlier today was talking about different potential cap casualties. And I use the cap casualty term very loosely. I also talk trades and I even rolled in extensions there because I mentioned Cam Bynum, who I think is on this team no matter what, unless the team wants to give a haul for him. And then you'll save like over $3 million on the cap. But I don't think he's going anywhere. And the reason why he ended up in that article is because the Vikings don't have bad contracts anymore. Their worst contract is Harrison Smith and they could cut him and save $11.3 million. And a retirement would save the same amount too. The worst contract might be Dean Lowry. And he's making less than four and a half million dollars on a cap hit. And you can cut that about in a half by releasing him. That might be the worst contract that they have on the books right now. He's done a great job of changing over a lot of the personnel on this team and staying flexible by signing Kirk Cousins to a mega deal. You take that away. And I really don't think he's going to end up here next year because he's going to want X. The Vikings are going to offer Y. And then they're not going to be able to come to a mutual understanding and agreement, which would be Z. I I don't see him here next year. And that's not because they don't want it. Both sides do. And they have been very, very consistent about both wanting to be here. Well, Sometimes it doesn't matter. uh, In this sort of public negotiation, or posturing is a better term. I think the Vikings have the leverage, and they are setting up Kirk to be the bad guy in this. Because if Kirk doesn't meet what the Vikings want and leaves, they can say, hey, we tried. We tried. And off he goes, right? And he may get his $51 million somewhere. Who knows? With a cap going up, people now can possibly afford it. I heard today that Oakland's revisiting it. Oakland. The Raiders, Las Vegas, is revisiting it because now they have a little extra money and maybe they can make Kirk Cousins work Mm -hmm. into that. So it's going to be interesting. I think it's a smart play by the Vikings. I think it's an honest play that uh, they discussed it. And we'll find out, obviously, but around March 13th somewhere. My question is, when it comes to, we'll, we'll stick with Kirk real quick, to it comes to his contract, all right? He has the uh, the void years, the four void years, right? And if mm-hmm. the 13th hits, all that accelerates. $28.5 million hits the cap, which is already figured into our cap numbers right now. Now, if he signs an extension, as we've discussed, maximum is forty million, and he can take on that due to the rules on how all that works. If if it voids completely, we take the twenty eight and a half million dollar cap hit. Could he come back and do a brand new contract after that, and say, "I want to be paid forty million." And or forty five million, let's put it over the limit. And then we work it so that I get paid in cash. I get bonus this year and get paid in cash, make the cap hit ten million. So you add the ten plus the twenty eight five and it's only thirty eight five and you guys are happy and I'm happy and we just extend the rest of that money out, you know, maximum up to five years. No. 
Okay. I don't think so. Uh, I really don't see anything happening that doesn't involve full, full guarantees in 2025. Mm-hmm. And that was the sticking point back in March. I think it's going to be the sticking point now. And it's even a, a more difficult sell now than it was in March. Like We can talk all about Kirk Cousins and his play last year, which was exemplary. You could argue it was an MVP level, and we've mentioned it on the show before. We're going to have a, a foot doctor come on the show here relatively soon, have a conversation about uh, Kirk Cousins' foot. Because, look, people may want to dismiss an Achilles injury. You generate a ton of power from your legs. You generate a ton of power because of that Achilles tendon. That allows you to be able to really drive off of your back foot and lead with your front foot. Those matter. And when you're 36 years old, which Kirk Cousins is about to be, it becomes significantly more difficult to come back from an injury like that. And Kirk doesn't have an exemplary arm. It is above average. And that matters here because if you had an elite level arm and it went to above average, that's still pretty good. But you go from above average down to about average, that becomes a concern with with all things considered. It limits you. And those limitations can make a massive difference on the field. All those really tight window throws that Kirk would throw to guys like Jefferson and Addison. Well, guess what? Those windows get significantly smaller when you can't fire in a piss missile. So that's not to say that Kirk's going to lose anything, but it's a real question and a real concern that he may lose arm strength because of that injury, because it takes away power and athleticism. When you have a torn Achilles tendon, ask anybody who's had one. Especially look at what the Cam Akers for- might be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at what Cam Akers might be. He's had two of them. Like he looked like he was finally coming back just over two years removed from his torn Achilles. And then he tears another one. It's a debilitating injury. It's Mm -hmm. not like paralysis debilitating, but it really makes an impact on you as a football player and what you can do to maximize your physical abilities. And you have to have real concerns about what he's going to be able to do long-term, which is makes it even more difficult to offer him guarantees in the second year of a contract, let alone a third, which I'm guessing Kirk still wants. He wants real security. And as a human being, he should. You could argue as a quarterback in the performance that he's had, he should. But the age thing matters. If he was 33 years old, I don't think there's a question. He's going to be 36. That three years matters a lot when you're getting closer to 40. Not everybody's Tom Brady. Peyton Manning's arm died. In his final year, it was brutal. He got carried by an elite defense and won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Like it matters here, and that I really don't think they're going to come to an agreement. But the fact that they both sides want to has like none of it's a surprise, and it shouldn't be to anybody who's paid attention. All right, what's your next? on the list comment that struck your fancy. Well, there's only one more that really struck my fancy because a lot of this Dave doesn't really matter that much uh, because it's just basic press conference talk. Quasi open was asked straight up. Yeah. He was asked straight up. Have you considered trading Justin Jefferson? This is the quote verbatim. That is not something that is a once crossed my mind. You've got a blue player, blue person. You try and keep as many of those as you can. And by blue player in person, he means blue chip. So absolute top of the line elite. It should be no real surprise that he's, he comes out and says this straight up. He also said earlier that I don't talk about my negotiations to anybody. So anybody who's saying how these negotiations are going are lying. That's not how I conduct business. That's not how he conducts himself as the general manager. And that's smart. Like, Dave, if you and I were having conversations about how much you or I were getting paid and we have to come to the agreement on that, do you think I'm going to go in the chat and tell Jamie, Dennis, and Trent? Nope. No. Like, that's just being a good business person. And you could say, hey, contracting extensions talks are going great. We've had conversations at this time and we're making progress. That's super vague. That's not talking about details. That's not talking about money. It's not talking about language. It's just saying, hey, we've talked. 
So those things matter and how you conduct yourself as a professional. And he, he did say one thing that was really interesting. He said that Jefferson told him when he first met him at TCO that I'm just going to come out here and get wins, man. Jefferson wants to win. That's all he and wants is wins. Yeah. yeah. He has a real chance to do that heavily in Minnesota. And all these trade talks about Justin Jefferson. I saw a trade where the Vikings give up 11 and two second round picks with Jefferson to go up to third overall. And of course the guy writes for the new England Patriots. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, no, that's not even close to what a trade would look like. You have to like at least give the compensation of what Jalen Ramsey was because Ramsey was the best corner in the national football league. Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the national football league. And he's arguably better on it. If, if you were to compare across positions, he's better than Jalen Ramsey. So I don't, I, I really don't think any of these trade offers that people are talking about are logical and they're well, not think, rooted in history. I don't think they are either. I think people think, Hey, for the number one or for the number three pick, that's going to cost this much to move up this much. But they're not mm -hmm. going, what is the cost if I just wanted to straight up trade for Justin Jefferson? What would that cost be? And then trying to offset it. Because there's no way it's, hey, give us your first, give us your next first, and Justin Jefferson, and we'll take it. And you're saying, what, Justin Jefferson's only worth a first or less? Uh, you're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. That's why when you force that, when we did that show, where we traded him as an exercise that we forced the trade where yep. we were given a lot for JJ and anybody who would ever think of coming for JJ better offer the farm because mm -hmm. he is that quality of a person and, and mm -hmm. player. It's, he's like I said last night, he sets records in every single season he's played so far. Yep, everyone. And he missed almost half of last year. So that's amazing. You don't get that anywhere else. So it's going to cost a lot. Yeah. Now, do we believe him? Judd said today that, you know, we remember Spielman saying, you know, we're not going to trade Percy Harvin. And of course, Percy Harvin got traded. And we're mm -hmm. not going to trade Diggs. And Diggs got traded. Well, has Quasi lied to us before openly like that? When we go, oh, beware of this. You know, that he hasn't talked about it, hasn't mm -hmm. crossed his mind. I don't know. I don't think so. I think Quasi is honest and says, no way. We're not idiots. We're not going to trade a, a blue like JJ. You want as many of those guys as you can on your team. And I agree with that 100%. So... It'll be interesting to find out. That's for sure. Yeah. I'll say this. The one thing that I think is different between Quasi Dofomenza and Rick Spielman, Rick played the game and he he would just tell you whatever he wanted you to hear. Quasi has this level of genuine about him, but he also doesn't tell you anything. So when he says, I haven't considered trading Justin Jefferson for a second, I tend to believe that versus like, hey, Rick Spielman's like, oh, we're not trading him. Like it, Rick Spielman's an old school football guy and old school football guys lie all the time. That's that's part of the culture. That's part of their job. And I think Quasi Dofa message is different. I'm not saying that he never will. I'm not saying that, hey, maybe he'll consider it tomorrow. Well, that doesn't mean he's considered it now because they were this close. This mm -hmm. close, ladies and gentlemen, on an extension last September. And he brought that up in today's presser. We were really close. And uh, we think we're, and we're confident that we're going to get it done. Plus, the difference with the Harvin and Diggs thing, they were both disgruntled. Yep. Jefferson's happy by all accounts. Completely mm -hmm. different. Yep. And he is by far the, the face of the Vikings. He's the face of the NFL. The league and it mm -hmm. as a whole, though I'm sure the Wolves 
are happy because he puts butts in seats and sells jerseys and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, he's making money probably hand over fist with an endorsements because you see them all over TV. And, you know, I don't think they're going to let him go. Dennis, yeah, never say never. Anything can happen. I agree with you there. But I don't think this is the time that that happens. So we'll find out. Now, there was one more player that was brought up in the press conference. Yeah. Daniil Hunter. Yep. And I thought the response was interesting. How so? Well, I mean, it was, they're saying, yeah, we're trying to negotiate to keep him. But I, what I gathered was almost a defeatist impression that they're probably going to lose him. Interesting. I'll be honest. I didn't gather anything like that. So, okay. uh, and, and that's the thing. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I just, I find it interesting that you gathered that. I might have to go back and watch and kind of see how uh, Kwesi ended up answering that question again. Because when you're doing 500 things during these pressers, trying to get uh, the, the pertinent information and yeah, it's, I would say no. Um, but the like reading the human body and body language and tone, like, people can perceive things differently. So it's not out of the question. I I've heard that Hunter Hunter wants the bag, and maybe the mm -hmm. Vikings can't give it to him like he, he believes other teams will. And I think we're gonna get a lot of stuff leaked about Hunter throughout the course of the next few days. He's gonna know what his market is. And the one thing going against him, there are a lot of good edge rushers out there. A lot of young edge rushers, Dave. Josh Allen, Jonathan Gennard, Chase Young. Daniel's 29 years old. So right. it, it's going to make things more difficult for him. And that could end up helping him stay with the Vikings. We'll find out. I It's still in the window of prime edge rusher at that age. They don't fall off until they hit like 33-ish. Generally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I just, I, that was the other one that caught me. Out of everything that was said, Quasi getting annoyed of his buddy being very loud um, during a conference, which I thought was funny. I think he did too. But that that's our reactions, folks. I don't know if you had any others out there. Please feel free to drop them in the comments, either now so, or after the fact. I've got two things. Freddie answer, asked a question earlier, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But Andrew Barry, the GM of the Cleveland Browns, which you had sent to me earlier, mm -hmm. Dave, uh, said that they will be hosting the Minnesota Vikings in joint practices this August. We don't know when that will happen. We don't know... How like what week, uh, what day, any of that? Yeah, but they do have, obviously have a connection. Uh, Quasi Dofamenta worked for Andrew Barry for two years in 2020 and 2021 before becoming the general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, and they have done three joint practices over Quasi's first two years, but all of them at TCO. Now they're going to travel for one, and I wouldn't shock me if they also host one because you can get a lot out of joint practices, a lot because you're not just going up against the same people. I want to answer Freddie's question here. Can Russell Wilson sign here for the NFL minimum and collect his contract from the Broncos? Yep. So I believe the total he's owed for this year is 39 million. So here's, here's what ends up happening. They have what's called offset language in the contract where the Broncos can collect whatever another team pays him and take it off of their salary cap. So theoretically, if we're, we're just, we'll give a flat number. Russell Wilson signs for $1 million to the Minnesota Vikings. It's more than that, but just to make things easy, the Broncos will save $1 million on their salary cap from that Russell Wilson guaranteed money. So this could be a way for Russell Wilson to stick it to the Denver Broncos and just take the league minimum. And then if it's a multi-year deal, oh, we'll take like an inflated rate in 2025 or something like that. So, yeah, he can do that. And you know what? Russell Wilson doesn't fit at all here. 
But at like 1 million bucks, yeah, I'd take Russell Wilson as a starter for a year. Well, it's a little bit more for his vested. Um, but yeah, a million and a half at least. But we're not the only team talking about it. The Steelers are talking about it. They're one of them. There's quite a few quarterback needy teams that the fans have brought that up with Russell Wilson. And Dylan, the reason for the deadline move on Davenport was so that they had more time to possibly renegotiate an extension. That's the only reason to do it. Yep. It's about maximum flexibility because the Vikings can offer Davenport a $5 million contract and still save money on the salary cap this year. It's mm-hmm. only a hundred thousand, but it's still saving a hundred thousand. So bringing him back could save you money this year, mm-hmm. especially if nobody wants to give him a contract considering of everything that happened last year and, and two high say, ankle sprains. Hey, vet minimum and prove it. Earn that money. Yeah. Like they had $2 million worth of um, game incentives. Like you play, you make it. So the Vikings will probably get a $1.5 million credit on the salary cap. I can't remember if it's this year or next year because Marcus Davenport didn't play those games. It's guaranteed. But then if it doesn't happen, you get to collect some of that back as like a like a rebate check, like how the government sends you a tax return, right. a tax it refund. On the likely Same to be earned credits. Yeah. And he didn't earn them, so that drops it, and they get them back. Yes, that's 100% yeah. correct. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining a special episode talking about the Combine press conferences. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell. Later tonight, after we meet our potential underdog rescue puppy, that we might be adopting. Yes, they don't just sponsor us. We live it too. We will be having a skull search talking about a couple cornerbacks that could be of interest to the Minnesota Vikings early in the draft. And we don't have an official time set up yet. That's why you want to subscribe and ring the bell because we're going to have stuff like this all week and all off season. When stuff happens, we're going to be going live after each night of the combine. We'll be going live after breaking news happens with free agency. We're going to be going live. You won't want to miss any of it. And if you can't join live, that's okay because you'll know it happened and you'll be able to check it out later. So until later tonight, I'm Tyler. He's Dave. Thank you for joining us and Skull Vikings, everybody. Skull Vikings. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. It helps us grow this community. And we all love our Minnesota Vikings. And on behalf of Tyler Fornis and myself, Dave Stefano, thank you so dearly for watching The Real Forno Show. Skull, everyone! <laughs>